Hey guys, what's up? My name is Anthony. Welcome to another edition of BNA Sports Talk. So today what I want to talk about is uh, the Giants mock draft part four. Yeah, th- th- that's a thing. So we're going to do that today. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, for this scenario, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the Giants selecting Isaiah Simmons at four because he falls to us. But there is a scenario, and I'm going to go through today, that Andrew Thomas or another elite left tackle falls to uh, uh, the late first, mid to late first round and the Giants can potentially trade up. So I have a couple of tiers that we can be looking at. And yeah, let, let's just get right into it because I'm excited with this video. I put on a, a decent amount of effort, not a lot of effort. And you know, I'd, I'd move mountains to make this video. But let's start with the mock draft. Number one, Joe Burrow. Number two, Chase Young. Number three, Jeff Okuda goes to the Lions, replaces Darius Slay right away. Some people are like, they're still going to take Isaiah Simmons, but for the sake of this mock, Isaiah Simmons goes to the Giants. They addressed their linebacker position for the the Lions did, and so did the Giants, to be fair. Best linebacker in the draft. Uh, Maybe Chase Young can be a linebacker. I don't know, but he's more of a 4-3 defensive end. But I think that the Giants would run up to the stage here. He's versatile. He's athletic. He doesn't need his combine, his 4.39 speed, his 38-inch whatever vertical leap. I don't even know what exactly what it is. I don't really care. He's versatile. Patrick Graham's going to have a field day with this guy. Him, being able to use him and Jabril Peppers on, you know, obvious passing downs at the linebacker spot. It's going to be fun. And, uh, yeah, so... It, our defense is going to be legit, but now we have an offensive tackle problem, I would say. You know, we have, we have a swing tackle. Fleming is probably going to be our right tackle at this point. Maybe Nick Gates, I'm not too sure. But let's go through the rest of my mock draft. And for this, I'm basically going to do the positions of value for the team um, at that certain point. So obviously, Tua and Justin Herbert are probably going to go 5-6. and six. So for funds, let's just say Justin Herbert goes number 5 to Miami. That's crazy. I don't know. Just for fun, because it doesn't really affect the rest of the mock draft. Then it may do because then the the Chargers may trade back, but I'm not mentioning that. So let's go with number seven, Derek Brown to the uh, Carolina Panthers. Defense tackle is going to be great value for them. And then the rest of the mock, you have great wide receiver value. You're going to have five or six wide receivers go. You're going to have a couple of corners, your Christian Fultons, your Grant Delpits, um, your CJ Hendersons of the world. Great value here. And they're going to be three or four of those guys. So you do that math, that's 10. But they're going to be at least, I think, two teams that are going to select their offensive tackle of the future. You're going to have the uh, Cardinals who select uh, Jedrick Wills, or, or Tristan Wirfs, rather. And then you're going to have the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting probably Wills because he can play that right tackle position because you already have um, Brandon Smith at that left tackle spot, and you're paying him a lot of money. And plus, uh, Jedrick Wills is used to playing that right tackle spot. So now you have Andrew Thomas, Mekhi Becton, and a couple other guys that have fallen uh, past pretty much the 15 spot. And this is where I think the Giants can start looking to trade up. Because you start getting uh, some teams that are a little bit disappointed. But before we get to those disappointed teams, um, the Dolphins pick at 18, and they're going to be looking for a left tackle. So the Giants may be looking to trade up and be like, let's get our third best uh, offensive tackle off the board. And let's do it. So the 16 Falcons and the 17 Cowboys. The Falcons are probably going to have an edge guy fall to them. Matos, Chase on. Um, maybe they like Epinesa. They may pick him at that spot. Plus, they have a lot of other values. But they did waste a lot of picks last year in trading up. They need positional depth. They have a lot of needs. They may be looking to trade back. And I think the positional value for this is going to be like two seconds, a third, and a fifth to trade all the way up here. And us and the Cowboys as well. The Cowboys may not give us a sweet deal because we are rivals and we did take their offensive coordinator. Heck, they may be excited that we did. I mean, they may be excited that we took their uh, head coach and, uh, you know, Jason Garrett. And then, you know, they're looking for a safety. Grant Delpit's probably going to fall to this spot. So they may be like, yeah, we're not trading back. We're not trading all the way back there and lose our, our guy. So I think this is really unlikely. But that means we're probably going to have the shot at our, thir- our fourth best offensive tackle taken because Miami... You know, they need a safety. They have a lot of other needs, but they address their defense. They may be like, we got Herbert. Let's get a left tackle. Call it a, a first round, maybe. Uh, but they still have one more pick. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. And then you have 19, 20, and 21. And these are my disappointed teams. These are my three disappointed gang. You have the Raiders, Jaguars, and Eagles who are looking for a wide receiver. Uh, but the, the Raiders got a wide receiver in this mock. The, so did the Jaguars. But they're going to miss out on their corners. They're going to miss out on their Fultons, their Delpits, their McKinneys, the guys that they needed in the secondary that are legit. You know, there really, really isn't that much great value until like the late 30s, early 40s at this position. This is more value for offensive tackles, to, per se. You know, maybe even quarterbacks. So uh, linebackers as well. You know, the Eagles may need a linebacker, but I'm just going to group these three together. These are the desperate teams, and they could be looking to trade back, especially if you're the Raiders. You know, you don't have a second-round pick. The Giants offer you a second, third, and a fifth. Yeah, I'd take it. 
get more talent to surround, get a bunch of like second round wide receivers, you get T Higgins, you can get um, maybe the guy from Colorado falls to you in the third round, you'd never really know because there's always like a weird guy who falls really that far deep, like how the Giants got Julian Love last year. And yeah, so, you know, that's how the Raiders may trade back. Then you have the Jaguars who are on a fire sale, they may just be looking to accumulate more talent. You know, they have two first-round picks next year as well. Just get a bunch of guys on this team. You drafted you draft pretty well. They, they're, they have pretty underrated drafts. They were able to get Jawan Taylor at a great positional value last year, even though he may not have panned out. They've done pretty well drafting. And then the Eagles, they could draft Patrick Queen at linebacker because that's a need. But uh, they could look to trade back as well. Denzel Mims probably doesn't fall to them at this spot. He may, as, he may well, but the Giants could be looking to trade here. Uh, that's the, basically the be-all and end-all, and I'd give this positional value a second, third, a fifth, and maybe a sixth uh, for that that value. I think the Giants would do it. Honestly, if we got Isaiah Simmons and Andrew Thomas in the draft, and that was our entire draft, I'd be happy. Um, but, but in this mock, I had the Dolphins taking Andrew Thomas, and I wouldn't mind Mekhi Becton, but I, I wouldn't love it. It depends who comes off the board at this point. You know, if Wills and Thomas are off, I'd lean towards not trading back. But let's get into my next tier. You know, you have the Vikings who their top positional value or like need is cornerback and wide receiver. But they can look offensive tackle. Their uh, current uh, left tackle has played nine years in the league. He's getting a little bit old. I think he's regressing a little bit, to be totally honest with you. And now they can have a chance to get young on this offensive line, get a big guy in Becton. They got drafted James Bradbury last year. Also, they drafted a guard as well. Um, well, I think James Bradbury is a guard. I don't know. I don't know too much about the, the Vikings. But they may be looking for an offensive tackle. And at this point, I'd almost say a no-go. If a team selects a, an offensive tackle, I cut the trade off. But some other teams that we could potentially trade with after that is the Patriots. They have a lot of talent that they need to fill this roster with. They have a bunch of old guys now, old defensive guys. They lost a lot of guys in free agency. But they've also drafted well in the past couple of years. Well, drafted a lot in the past couple of years. They always have comp picks and things like that. So... Uh, I think that they could trade back with the Giants because of the Joe Judge connection. He recommended Joe Judge to us. He may be like, yeah, I'll give you guys a little bit of a deal. I'll give you guys like a second and a third instead of a second, third, and a fifth. So this is a trade partner. You can also trade with the Saints who only have five picks. But it feels like every single year they have five picks and they end up finding studs like Alvin Kamara, uh, Eric McCoy, Michael Thomas. It always feels like they find those types of studs. So they may be like, yeah, it's just a normal draft. And then after that, you have the Dolphins who already selected their left tackle. They have 14 picks in this draft or so, something like that, something crazy. So maybe they probably won't trade back. Then you have the Vikings, uh, the trade back candidate, but you tell me wide receiver cornerback, that they're probably going to be decent value at that point. They get their uh, guys right back, and I think they're not going to be looking to trade back as much um, as you would think, even though they have a lot of salary that they may dump. And then the Seahawks pick next. Um, you know, they have Brown at the uh, left tackle. He, they get, get injured everywhere. And the, the Seahawks are always the weirdest ones because last year they turned four picks into 11 somehow. They always pick, like, weird. It's always confusing. Like, they trade back from the spot they already trade back with. So they're a little bit of a wild card. We did do business to them last year. And if Makai Becton falls, I wouldn't mind it. But if we're jumping up to select Josh Jones, I wouldn't do it. And then you have teams like Green Bay, Tennessee, who need tackles. So they're probably going to select tackles. Uh, yeah, so this is the last position of value I can see. And I'd only do it if we only gave up our second and our third. If we start getting into the fifth, those are like the meat of our drafts. We've proven that we can select guys there. And if we're picking a developmental left tackle that may fall to us anyway, I'm not going to be too hyped for it. The reason why we selected DeAndre Baker last year is because he was the first cornerback taken off the board. He was the best cornerback in our opinion. And, you know, it remains to be seen. You know, some people think Sean Bunting is the best. Some people think... um, you know, Rocky Sin is going to develop to be the best cornerback in last year's draft. But we'll see. And it's going to be very interesting. Let me know what you guys would do. Uh, let me know if you think this mock draft was realistic or not. Whether it's like, oh, uh, definitely they're going to be four taken before the Giants ever get to 17. Or you may be like, there's only going to be one. You know, there's, the Cardinals may not even select an offensive tackle. They may go like cornerback. Because there are a bunch of needs that the Cardinals have too. But always let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you guys in my next video. I think that's everything I had to say. I promise. This is like my 10th time recording this. But I hope you guys enjoy I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys.